Last week, two papers were released on the same day. One in the Cell magazine and the other in the Science magazine. But doing justice to both, this video will limit itself to the Cell paper and there will be another video on the Science paper. The Cell paper was authored by a group of scientists led by Dr. Vasant Shinde and Dr. Neeraj Rai and their team. It's titled, An Ancient Harappan Genome Lacks Ancestry from Steppe Pastoralists or Iranian Farmers. And we will go through it section by section. So right at the beginning, there is this picture which shows that the IVC individual and the IVC periphery individuals separated from the ancestors of the Iranian agriculturalists at about 10,000 BC. So Indus Valley civilization people do not have any relation with the Iranian agriculturalists from the later period of 7000 BC. This disproves one huge point that many have been saying since a long time that agriculture is not indigenous to India and it was brought from outside. This now proves that agriculture was developed within India and by Indian people. Then in the next section, which is the introduction section basically, the paper introduces us to the one skeleton that yielded analyzable genetic data. Meet skeleton 1 I6113 alias RGR 7.3 BR1HS2. The paper then explains in great detail how difficult it is to extract genetic details in the harsh Indian climate and the entire process carried out to extract usable genetic information for drawing concrete conclusions from it, including sophisticated statistical analysis. Based on these statistical analysis, it was found that the previously analyzed 11 individuals from Gonor and Shahri Shokta from and the I-6113 from Rakhigadi were of the same origin. So those 11 individuals belonged to Indus Valley civilization and had migrated to areas like Iran and Central Asia from where their remains were excavated and analyzed. This conclusion was reached based on the analysis that they were not local to the areas they were found from because their genetic data did not match with the 44 other remains found with these 11. These 11 remains matched with the Indus Valley Civilization data instead. And our I6113 skeleton from Rakhigadi also matches with these 11. So it can definitely be concluded from this section that the 11 individuals had gone out of India to Iran and Central Asia during the Indus Valley times. The paper also proves and it also provides evidence that these individuals had no Anatolian ancestry as well. This ancestry is clearly present in the Iranian agriculturalists but has no relation with the Indus Valley population. So from this section we can conclude that during the mature Harappan phase people moved out of India and mixed with people from regions like Iran and Central Asia. If I was like the people who proclaim the Aryan invasion theory and a supremacist, I would call this the Harappan invasion of Central Asia. This data would give me enough ammunition to claim an invasion from Harappan people by the, Ind by the Indus Valley people to Central Asia. But I am not. Then comes the interesting and somewhat controversial part. This is the part that Aryan invasion and Aryan migration theory fans in India, you know, namely Tony Joseph, the Hindu, Scroll, Wire, Outlook, Open and many others have now latched onto. This is their last hope and so they're making the last stand based on this part. The paper says it has definitively demolished the Anatolian hypothesis for Indo-European languages, but, and I'm quoting from the paper, the fact 
that the steppy pastoralist ancestry in South Asia matches that in Bronze Age Eastern Europe, but not Western Europe, provides additional evidence for this theory. There is a theory of steppy migration to India. As it elegantly explains the shared distinctive features of the Balto Slavic and Indo Iranian languages. Then the paper goes on to explain all the methods and techniques it has used to arrive at this conclusion and how errors were eliminated in the process. You can go and refer and see the paper yourself. There is no more need to explain in any more detail about the paper except that last bit. While it does seem that this paper is heralding a new direction in ancient DNA analysis of the South Asian regions, it has to be kept in mind that this is only the first paper of many other papers lined up. With more papers coming in, possibly by the end of this year itself, these conclusions may soon vanish. This paper must serve as a warning to people arguing for the Aryan hypothesis that changed the entire dynamics of South Asia. These people argue that steppe people are the Aryans who brought in real culture to India. They brought in language, culture, religion and lifestyle that we see in modern day India. I warned them by saying that when these steppe people came in at 1500 BC, they were migrants who the Indians felt nothing but pity for. This was the original Kharubapsi for the people who went out of India during the mature Harappan times. Maybe they felt homesick and they came back. To the ones jumping the gun again, I would urge for their own benefit to have a look at the podcast by Kushal Mehra with Dr. Neeraj Rai, titled the same as the paper on the YouTube channel named the Charvaka Podcast. That should really serve as a warning to them as to what is coming in the future. I, for my part, am not going to indulge in any more speculations right now and will wait rather keenly for the future papers to come out. A little hint before ending, the papers relate to Indian horses and the hotly debated R1A1 gene.